Joe. Hi, I'm Sarah, and this is the story of our wedding day. It's kind of nice. I mean, I think we spent a lot more time in the limo that, than a lot of other bridal parties do, which, you know, for better or worse, I, I enjoyed it. We got there at 4.50 exactly is what the GPS was, was mm -hmm. slated to, or was saying we were slated to arrive at. We need to drive this to Caesar Street at 1, right here. but we need to get out all of our stuff that we need to take. Where's your bag? My bag is in the trunk. There was no real issues with getting to the hall from there. Relax the calm before the storm. One of the things on the checklist was Joe and I with our MC. Yes. And our MC is here. Yes. yes. Okay. Like walking in to Salon A. Well, Giuseppe and Sarah were on the top of the edge. Uh, yeah, we made the, the top of the list, maybe because we were Salon A. You know what? I'm ready to see it. I'm ready to see it. All right, let's go. Wasn't the hall great? Oh, but pleasantly surprised. It was beautiful. They did a really The nice lampshades show. were so fantastic. It was like a supper club. It was it was so perfect. It was it, it was fantastic. And, the, and did you notice the um, high tops? Yeah, the high tops were great on the dance floor. Bumonetes look so nice. All those. I, I, that table was huge. Very happy. It was exactly what um, it was supposed to look like, and I was very pleased. My first time going there, and I'm like, oh, our champagne glasses are there, everything was there. So Lisa had taken care of everything. The head table looked great. We had four lamps on the head table and all the candles. And you know what? I hadn't even gone up to the head table until we walked in. So Vanessa and Fab had taken care of all the moving of the stuff. They did a lovely job. I had no idea. He had never seen any yeah, demos of anything. Didn't meet the decorator. No never clue went to a meeting. about anything. Oh, well, partly Flowers, because he just had no interest. About... Yeah, that too. I, thank you for pointing that out to people. <laughs> no, it's okay. Perfect. Did you see the ceiling was covered too? Well, the three. Yeah. Yeah. But it was kind of cool how the like those blankets went under the chandeliers, mm -hmm. like directly, like they spaced them out perfectly. No cake topper. All three layers were edible. That just meant it was a business cake. It was a cake that was to be eaten. No fancy decorations required. Mm -hmm. Just dig in and eat. Hopefully people did. I didn't go look at the dessert table until later in the night. Everything was really yeah. good. completely covered up that mural. They completely covered up that I know, partition some people wall. think it's sacrilegious to uh, cover up that mural, but I'm sorry, it's not our deal. That's, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. 
we got so many compliments on the haul. Like even guys, like that don't even usually, <laughs> like Scott and um, James, both thought that the haul was unbelievable. We just got so many compliments. And I was nervous about the dance floor size because it was very specific about wanting the head table across from the band. And they said there was too many people and the dance floor wasn't gonna be as big as you think it's going to be, but it was, it was so perfect. We're so happy that he said yes. Mother of the bride, Francis Martino Sue there, accompanied by Victor Tenuta, cousin of the bride. <laughs> Parents of the groom, Immaculata and Giuseppe de Santo. <laughs> Flower girl and niece of the groom, Victoria Ackman, along with ring bearer, nephew of the groom, Sammy DeSanto. Junior bridesmaid, niece of the groom, Annika DeSando, along with two nephews of the groom, Jameson Ekman and Matteo DeSando. Maid of honor is accompanied by the two best men, Fabiola Mascaro, as uh, best friend of the bride, Julio DeSando, brother of the groom, Vanessa Soulier, sister of the bride, and Ralph DeSando, brother of the groom. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the bride and groom, Mr. and Mrs. Joe and Sarah Sando. His speech was spectacular, which that went above and beyond what we expected. I would like to say a few words, more of a reflection of what marriage truly is. Before I begin, for, however, I would like to let everyone know that these two young people put a lot of work in this wedding. They have a lot of hard work. So, round of applause for that, first of all. And also, a round of applause for looking good. I would just like to say how happy and overjoyed I am that my cousin Joe, AKA Giuseppe, has leapt into the institution of marriage with open arms. I've been ma uh, married a very long time. It'll be two years in October. <laughs> and I can say that I've learned so much. I have learned that the Italian culture 
did not prepare me for what marriage truly is. <laughs> we grew up in a culture that was fantastic, where men were kings. <laughs> Our fathers would say, Ka comando io. <laughs> oh yeah, I am the boss. A little bit of English, a touch of Italian. Christmas was our favorite holiday. We would eat and drink, and our mothers would scurry about making sure we ate enough. De voce pasta. Mangia, hidio. Once we were done eating, the men would leave the table, lay on the couch or chairs, and take a well-deserved nap. Then, that's when the magic happened. The women would start cleaning and washing the dishes, and we would just sit back and watch and marvel in the efficiency in which they would work. It's like a beautiful dance with dish soap and the clanging of pots and pans. And the kicker was, as boys, we were not allowed to help. Even if you asked your mother, she would laugh at you and say, li lavo io li piatti. We wash the dish, bello. No worry about it. You know, it was very much his style. right, yeah, right yeah. on his style. Hands up, men in the room who are married, please. Hands up. Men that are married here, great. Hands up, men in the room who are married and feel that uh, they're the boss. <laughs> That's right, people, nobody. <laughs> so, Joe, that's a lesson for you right there. Women are the backbone of who we are. And those days in the Italian basement watching the beautiful dishwashing dance is just a faint memory. <laughs> Seriously, folks, love is a wonderful element of who we are as people. And when you find it, you are complete. I'm very happy for both of you. And Joe, you are lucky to have found such a beautiful and intelligent woman in Sarah. Really lucky. Extremely lucky. <laughs> like winning the lottery, lucky. Like when you find that 20 bucks in your jeans, lucky. You know what I mean? As MC, my duties are to propose a toast to the bride and groom. So if you would fill your glasses, everyone. I don't know if the non-Italians in the room found it as funny as the rest of us did, but I think it was, there were a lot of non-Italians that told me how funny they thought that he was. To the bride, may she share everything with her husband, including the housework. I'm just kidding on that one, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Seriously, everyone in this room today is here to witness the love that you have for one another. To Sarah and Joe, may their genuine and loyal love continue on forever. Per cent'anni. They enjoyed him, so that's so that's wonderful that other people commented on him too. Yeah, it was a spectacular job. The honor of welcoming you here on this wonderful wedding occasion is usually reserved for the father of the bride. Sarah's dad, Don, passed away five years ago, but I know in my heart that Don, my husband, and Sarah's dad is here with us tonight. For those of you who knew Don, I want you to visualize him standing next to me. He stands tall beside me, full of pride and unconditional love for his beautiful daughter, Sarah, and her husband, Joe. And so on behalf of Don and myself, I want to thank you all for coming to Sarah and Joe's wedding. Your dad always has lots to say. He's as, you, as was evident in the speech. Was, <laughs> he had, he had, li had lived it real well. I'd like to welcome Sarah into the DeSandos family. And today is a special day for Sarah and Joe. And I want to thank all the guests that come in here from out of town. Thank you all. And a toast to the bride and groom. Salute. Salute. For 100 years. But well, that's great, though. That's my dad, and you know, that's what Absolutely. he does. So. My mom loved when Joe would come over with Sarah because Joe would speak to her in his Italian dialect. And she would always say, Ma Joe, come sei comico, which in Italian means, Oh, Joe, you're so funny. She just loved him. And she just thought Joe was such a nice, genuine guy and was so happy that Sarah found such a respectful, good Italian boy. But Vanessa is very unique and she had everything rhyme. I pushed you down when you tried to walk. I probably laughed when you learned to talk. 
We grew together, but grew apart. Being close in age may have been the start to cause us to argue, nag, in strife. Nothing I tried could rid you from my life. Vanessa did her poem to uh, her rhyme. We hadn't a clue that tomboy Sarah would grow up to be the most beautiful princess for everyone to see. Ralph made a comment about Vanessa's speech being mm. like the green eggs and ham guy. Dr. Seuss? Yeah. Take care of each other, show love and respect, and remember, Joe, that Sarah is always correct. <laughs> I love you guys. A lot more effort was put into Ralph's speech than I, than I was expecting. He is an amazing uncle to all his nieces and nephews. Just ask him. <laughs> he's, he's taught them all to diligently recite how he is the favorite uncle. <laughs> My own son, to this day, gets so excited when he hears that Jojo is coming to visit. He can't wait for the morning to come so that he could jump on him while poor Joey is sleeping. And Joey, being the best uncle, just sits there and takes it and, and he doesn't even bother him. And I know Julio was alluding to the fact that we're going to be pressured to have grandchildren as soon as possible. But, but the importance of family is, has always been, um, been something that, that we treasured. And, um, <clears throat> you know, when the De Cristofanos came into our lives and then the Chisholms, the uh, Ekmans, and now the Souliers, it's really um, completed our, our family. Um, and with the exception of a few extra grandchildren, which I'm sure, let me be the first to say it, because I'm sure after today you'll hear it many, many, many more times. Mateo's speech was classic. That kid cracks me up. We've been to baseball games, hockey games, even a football game or two. And um, even though uh, he's not my favorite uncle, I still love him. <laughs> what did he tell me? Good luck? Yeah, because you're going to need it. Good luck, Sari, because you're going to need it. But mainly, I wish Sarah the best of luck. Trust me, you'll need it. I was nervous for my speech. That kid got up there. Joe, when we started out as casual friends, I knew you were a catch, but didn't realize you were the one for me. It was at a time when I needed moral support and a personal cheerleader that you were there with open arms, literally speaking, of course. It was really at that time that I realized what a special guy you really were and how perfect we are for each other. There are so many qualities that I love in you. You are calming, supportive, loving, caring, and kind. I love how you make me laugh every day and how we complement each other's qualities perfectly. I love how much you care for your parents and your siblings and how much family means to you. I love being with you and doing everyday things together. There is always a feeling of love, excitement, and a feeling of comfort when we are together. I know that today was just one of many ha happy celebrations in years to come and I look forward to sharing our lives together. You did really well, though. Well, thank you. You often ask me why I love you so much. And the first thing that comes to my mind is the fire I see burning behind your eyes. To me, those eyes say so much about your ambitions and the high standards you've set for yourself. You have this drive and determination that I adore, and you are a good-natured person. You melt my heart every time I see you, and one of my favorite things is to hear you laugh. Although nobody makes Sarah laugh quite like Sarah, I promise to try every day. Well, what's funny is the reason we picked the first dance is because Sarah bought me a... Happy anniversary card? Yes. And it was Sam Cooke's uh, You Send Me. So... And neither one of us dance. We were doing the samurai sword, that too. Oh, uh, right. If you ever watched the old episodes of Married with Children, Al, when, when Al and Peg were running upstairs, I would always be like pinching her bum on the way up the, on the, way up the stairs. So, <laughs> like, we're just gonna go and do that. I'm talking way more than you. Was it, I, um, a day. There was a time when the girls were underneath your dress. I'm sorry, can you describe that some more? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm good. Yeah, Facebook Club, I love cleavage.
And then it'll just be like pictures of cleavage. I used to have a whole file. Yeah, on his computer. I deleted it when I met Sarah. Oh, of course. <laughs>